Hello and welcome again to the Rugby Stars Quiz. And today we are expecting this game to be played in the very best spirit because, as you can see, we've got two world-renowned referees joining us, Wayne Barnes of England and Ben O'Keefe of New Zealand. A long way between the two there. OK, so what are the laws for today's game? We will have the usual picking of the shirt jerseys, 1 to 15, and it's seven points, trying a conversion, if you get the right answer with no help on those. But if you need a little bit of help, there are three multiple choice options available, but only three points available in that scenario. You've gone for the penalty goal. Now, these guys, we know, are perfectly neutral. So there's no home and away element today. But what there is, is a worldwide feel because we're anticipating the North versus South rivalry. But it's potluck. You get the questions that come your way in terms of difficulty and also what part of the world they're going to relate to. Final round, well, that will be all about officiating for Wayne and Ben here. Question on their specialised subject. And available there, 10 points, the full house, if you get it right with no help. Three points again is the option, should you need the options. Now, the first thing we need to do is something that these guys normally do, and that is toss a coin against the uh, backdrop of the advertising board. Today, you'll have to do with my dusty old bookshelf. So... The guest, I suppose, from the other side of the world is Ben. I'm going to ask you to call heads or tails. Tails. Come on. Let's well, go heads. First yeah, little good start, Benny. Away. Good start. You never want to win the toss. Never want to win the toss. So what do you want to do, Wayne? Do you want to go first or second? Oh, I've got, got to kick off, haven't you, Miles? Let, let's get straight into it. Okay. Can I just check your studs before we start? <laughs> oh, what, what's going on? Just ready for the game. Ready for this, Miles. Wayne, first question, what's your number? Um, I'm going to start, I think, someone who always talks to referees throughout the game, so it's got to be the number nine we're going to start with. Number nine, OK, let's see uh, where that takes us. Justin Marshall, yeah. 81 caps for New Zealand, the last of which was as a replacement in the third Lions test 2005. Justin came on for Byron Keller, huh? Who was his halfback partner in that third test when he came on? Ben's looking smug there. I think he knows it. But then, yeah, come on. Um, let's have some options, Miles. OK. Luke McAllister, Dan Carter, Nick Evans. Luke oh, McAllister, Dan Carter, Nick Evans. So, oh, five. Oh, this was, was this the game where Carter was the, uh, played the immaculate game? Third test. Third test. Oh, my goodness. This is where I should have uh, I should have been watching rather than uh, doing all of all of my homework. Obviously, um, I'm gonna go for. Um, so definitely for some Burns. Let's go for Dan Carter. Ben, what do you think? Um, I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to put him off. I like that. <laughs> Referee shouldn't really do that. Um, that could be the first yellow card. It's Luke McAllister. What's your number, Ben? Um, we're going to go for a uh, famous number in New Zealand, number seven. Mm -hmm. Give me a big one. Number seven. Well, it's about refereeing in the end, but bear with me. The autumn of 2005, Lewis Moody became the first England player to be sent off at Twickenham. Yeah. He moved in on his Leicester teammate, Alessandro Tuilangi, following Alessandro's challenge in the air on Mark Coeto, just to jog your memory of the moment. But who was the referee that sent Lewis Moody off? Um, no, give, we'll be to go for, uh, be to go for a, few, um, a few options. OK. 2005 was the year. Andre Watson, Stuart Dickinson, Mark Lawrence. 2005. Um, is Mark Lawrence still in those games in? Who gave Lewis in... Moody his marching orders? First England player to be sent off at Twickenham. Andrew Watson's pretty tough. Watson. He would have pulled out his card. At least he um, filled him properly as well, though, didn't he? I remember him taking Cueto out. Cueto landed ugly. And then Lewis always, well, he never took a backward step, did he? And um, he properly filled him in that day. It was Who was it, Who you riffed it? Um, I, I think I know who it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to, I don't know. I'm just going to take a step in the dark. England Sama, I reckon. There you go. Let me go, Stu, Stu Dickinson. Barnsley? I think it's Mark Lawrence, isn't it? 
Yeah, it was Mark Lawrence. Mark Lawrence. Andre Watson actually retired because he took charge of the 2003 World Cup final. Day that England will never forget. He retired in 2004. Uh, Mark Lawrence was the man that sent Lewis Moody off. So neither of you at the moment on the board. So uh, over to you, Wayne. Consistent, though. Consistent. Um, so let's go into the front row. This, you know, if we're going to get some front rows, the questions might be a bit easier. So um, I always enjoy the company of someone like Joe Marler on a pitch. So let's go number one. Okay, right. Regular watchers of this quiz will know that every now and again we like to go back in time a long, long way. Brian Habana will testify to that in his match against Jamie Heath's Lip Lions South Africa game. Now, the question is about a great British and Irish Lions prop, Ian McLaughlin of Scotland. Ian is, was known in his playing days as the mighty what? The mighty mouse. Boom. The mighty mouse is correct. Nice, Lions Andy. tourist in 71 uh -huh. and 74. Good answer. Ben, playing a bit all of right. catch-up. <clears throat> no, no, it's, all, it's fine. It's all about the long game. Um, look, we're going to move into the backs, New Zealand. And we love a bit, of, a bit of fast rugby, so score a lot of tries on the wings. We'll go for number 11. Number 11, I think you're going to like it. The famous Cap World one. Cup semi-final, New Zealand, England, 1995 Cape Town. How many tries did the great, late, great Jonah Lomu score that day? I'm going to lock in four against England. I like that. Oh. Lock it in four. He did score four. It's Is level right? at seven each. Well played. Yes, well played. come on. I needed that. So the front row has done me well. So let's, let's go to the other side of the scrum. Let's go number three. All right, OK. 2015 Champions Cup final. Toulon Clement Averne at Twickenham. Carl Heyman wore number three and lifted the trophy as Toulon captain. But which other Kiwi was man of the match that day? Might have been one for Ben, this, but uh, it's fallen your way, Wayne. Which other was Kiwi the... was man of the match? I was on the touchline. I know you so were. probably there. Um, so, too long man of the match. Uh, Christmas, so had he gone by then? Um, could have been Chris. Because um, he'd gone from cast over to Toulon. Choices? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Rudy Wolf, Chris Marceau, Ali Williams. Uh, I, I'm going to see it. I'm going to stick with Chris. I'm going to stick Sticking with Chris. Chris. Stick Locking Christmas it in. Stuff. Yeah, it's lock it in. Sense. Well, you need a key, because it wasn't. It's Arlie Williams. Arlie Williams was man of the match Ooh. that day. Chris Marseille was playing. You're absolutely right. But Arlie Williams took the man of the match award. You stay on seven. Ben, your next choice. All right, we'll, uh, we'll go first five, number 10. Number 10. Oh, you might like this as well. Who started at fly half for France against the All Blacks in the 2011 World Cup final? Who was the starting 10 for France in that game? Who, who started at 10? Who, who was the French player that started at 10? Yep. <laughs> How come oh. I get the questions about New Zealand and Ben gets the questions about New Zealand as well? Any England ones in there anywhere, Miles? There are. A, he's a French player. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely it's a French go, um, question. Yeah, we'll what? definitely go for the choices. Choices. Francois Tranduc, Morgan Parra, Damien Try. Who started? Fly half. Do you know what's it? Oui, bien sûr. Tranduc. Final answer? Yeah. Hmm. No, no, no. Barnes is shaking his head as well. Is it Morgan Parra? Morgan yeah. Parra, wasn't he? Morgan Parra. Uh, yeah. to it's a tricky one, really, because, of yeah. course, he's more yeah. known as a scrum okay. half, but he was fly yeah. half. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, Until he met Richie McCaw about 20 minutes in, and then uh, he went, and on came uh, Francois Tranduc. I mean, Tri was also on the bench. Typical Kiwi, though, Ben, you're just taking note of your own side and not the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was a good day that day. <laughs> Wait, we're all level still at seven all as we approach half time. Right, M Miles, are there any questions which aren't about New Zealand out of these next, um, you know, six or nine that I've got coming? It's up to you to find them. 
and right. less of the back chat, okay? <laughs> right. Um, great call risk, great call risk. You know great what I've got in my pocket. You don't want me to go there. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's get away from the forwards. They haven't done me that well so far. Um, so let, let's, get into, let's get into the pretty boys and let's go to n number 12. Number 12, okay. Now, this is a game Ben refereed. Japan-Scotland... Oh. Pool game, obviously, at the last World Cup. Epic in Yokohama. Sam Johnson wore number 12 for Scotland in that match. But in which country was Sam born? Now, I know he's an Antipodean. Surely you can't be a Kiwi. So I think he's, I think he's Australian. Um, I think I've read that somewhere. I am... Are you going without choices? Um... Uh... Back myself, Australia. You back yourself well. Yep. Yes. Born a place called Dysart. Well done. About a thousand kilometres north of Brisbane in Queensland. Sam Johnson, the Scotland International. So, Wayne will go to half time with 14 on the board. What about you, you Ben? You stay on seven or will you be able to add to it just before the interval? What's your number choice? Yeah, no, I think we're going to go to the break even. And I'm going to come with number. Give me number nine. Yeah, already had that. Number nine gone. Okay, don't give me number nine. I'll cross that off properly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two. Number two. Just make sure you don't book the wrong player when you write the number on the. on the card, okay? Got that. So, number two. The 2050 World Cup. And a game that Wayne refereed, Wales versus South Africa quarterfinal at Twickenham. Hooker for South Africa that day, Bismarck Duplessis. Now, Bismarck made his international debut in 2007 in the same match that brother Yanni made his international debut in as well, also in the front row. Who were the opposition to South Africa? 2007, famous game because the two brothers debuted on the same day. But who were they playing? And you can have options, of course. Yep, you give me options. <clears throat> okay. Australia, New Zealand, England. Australia, okay. New Zealand, England. <laughs> you haven't got a clue, have you? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> no, I don't actually. <laughs> I was expecting other questions, other questions for these two. Um, if they were to pop up. Um, who would they have debuted against? Probably be a, a rugby championship or Tri Nations game, I would have thought. What, would they have been more likely to play debuted in an autumn series against England, maybe? Uh, my, 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 my first country that popped in my mind was Australia, because um, I'd never debuted them against the New Zealand All Black. You know, it'd be too tough, so we'll go Australia. <laughs> like it. Australia is the right answer. It's good thinking. Yeah, logical yes. thinking. Half time with a punch of the air from Ben. It is Wayne 14, Ben 10 as we go to the interval. So nice and tight. 14-10, uh, Wayne. Pretty confident now, you know, on, on a roll. I, I think that's two, that might be two on the bounce. So let's let's stay out in the centres. Maybe um, number 12 did me well. So let's go to number 13. Okay, number 13. Who wore the number 13 shirt all the way through for Japan? at the 2019 World Cup. Every game, number 13. Uh, I refereed him as well in the quarterfinal. I was with you in that game. You were. Standing next to him. This is a problem as a ref. You're always looking here, not on the outside back. That's the assistant ref's job. <laughs> um, oh, you're going to have to give me the three, the three options, Miles. Right, the three options are Kataro Matsushima, Tim Lafaelli, Will Tapo. I'm going to go Tapo. Ben? I would have gone Lafaelli. You'd have gone right, Ben, because it's uh, Tim Lafaelli. Made many yeah. people's team of the tournament. He was that good. Yeah, um, he was excellent. You got a chance to uh, take over here. <laughs> yeah, well, I've just, I, I feel like I've just woken up now, so I'm um, really, ready to go. <laughs> So from that close, um, I'd be I'd be worried if I was Barnsley. Um, let's go with. Uh, we had we have, have we had fifteen. We've not had fifteen. Yeah. 
of doing that. And Barnsley weren't like this because it's about England. Mike Brown scored twice and took man of the match on the opening night of the 2015 World Cup at Twickenham when hosts England beat Fiji. Which other England player got his name on the score sheet that night as a try scorer? One other England player did, apart from Mike Brown. Who was it? Do you need help? Yeah, I thought, would have thought England would have scored more. <laughs> um, give me the options. The options are Billy Vonapola, nobody because the only other try was a penalty try, or Chris Robshaw. It was a penalty try in that game, wasn't there? Was there a rolling ball that collapsed for the try line? Oh, that's thrown me completely, that penalty try call. <laughs> that's why it was there. That's why it was there. But the question, remember, which other England player got his name on the team sheet? It might be a trick. It might not. It'd be very, it'd be, it'd be very unfair, Miles, if that was a trick question. So, um, Billy, do you have a big run? We'll just go Billy. Come on, Billy. Billy? Score me a try. Score yeah, me a did. try, Billy. He did right at the end. He got England a bonus point. That was a penalty try. You're absolutely right. You remember the game well. Ah. And Vunapola <laughs> with that try at the end. Wayne. Right, I'm going to stick to my roots. Go back to what I know best. So back in the forwards, number six, my position, non-tackling back row. Your position. <laughs> I said at the start, it's potluck what comes your way. In what year did Jerome Kano win the world <laughs> Young player of the year. Now, remember, oh. you have to be 21 or under to win oh. it. Well, so thanks. try and work out what you might be now. And there are options if you need it. So and it's very tight. One point in it. So Jerome's now over in Toulouse and he'll be about 35. Now you're going to have to give me some, some dates so I can at least have a yeah. go at that miles but you, if you give me something like oh three oh four oh five that's <laughs> really <brilliant. laughs> would i do that would i do yes. that i probably would but actually they're a bit more spaced out than that oh yeah. two oh four oh six oh two oh four oh six well i said oh four oh five so i'll stick with that i'll go oh four oh four it was when Jerome came over as world young player of the year. Yeah, that was solid. They worked that one out as well. Good thinking. He's now 37, is he then? Okay. Well, yeah. You do the maths. But uh, that's when he won it. And of course, he was nominated for world player of the year in 2011. In yeah. Senior role. That was the year it went to Thierry Dussatois. Right. So that's a three-pointer for Barnsley. That's 17-13. Interesting match situation. Nearly at midway point of the second half, Ben. What are you going to do here? I'm still so annoyed by the Morgan Power question. I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> got to move on like a goal kicker. You've got to move on. <laughs> oh, I needed that. Um, we'll go with uh, number eight. <clears throat> number eight. Exeter won the English Premiership title for the first time in 2017, beating Wasps in the final. They had a New Zealand-born, oh, England-capped... Number eight, New Zealand born, England cap number eight, Thomas Waldrum. Oh, phew. Oh. What's his nickname? <clears throat> Thomas the what? Thomas the doot doot. Bank engine. Come on, Miles. <laughs> That's Thank like you asking... very, very much. <laughs> That's like asking, Ben, what's your surname? <laughs> That's outrageous. I just wanted what That's happened there, which game. was for Ben or you to go doot toot. Oh, no. We got it. We got it. Couldn't <laughs> resist. Couldn't resist. Straight what? to it. Good score. Some, you know, some scores are easier than others, Barzi, unless the referee makes it too difficult for the players. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what year good, was Jerome Kano, um, <laughs> under 20s player of the year, what was Thomas the Tank's nickname? Oh, it's the Tank. <laughs> Look, I can't help our, our knowledge here, Barnsley. It's, um, it's been a great game so far, and I think the ref's having a really really good contribution to this match. So, Miles, keep going, mate. You're doing a great job. Yeah. But I'm not going to be influenced by your nice toad there, Ben. <laughs> Players, try that on you, I know. Right, round seven, 17 to Wayne. Ben has 20. These right. are big decisions now. I'm sticking in the... I'm going into the row. 
So let's go um, Martin Johnson's number, number four. Martin Johnson's number, Martin Johnson question. Oh. He played for which New Zealand regional stroke club team Ooh. when he was out there? Went on to play for New Zealand under 21s. I've spoken to him about this. Options get you level. 28, right. but Ben would have let, a let, let, let's have play options. in hand. Options, okay. Buller, King Country, Poverty Bay. I remember Buller, I think, so. And isn't Buller Fijian for hello? Oh, it's spelled differently, but yeah. Right, and what are the other two miles? I think you digress, Wayne, to be <laughs> fair. But the other options are King Country and Poverty Bay. Which I'm going to go some King time. Country. King Country, was that? Yeah, I've recognised the name. King Country's good answer. Fancy. Martin Johnson played for. Did and that was know? Colin Mead's team as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. I actually thought it was either, I couldn't remember if it was King Country or Thames Valley. Um, so when, you, when the options came out, I'd, uh, I'd already circled King Country. So that's a lucky one, mate. That's, I needed that one. Yeah, yeah, great. And another lucky one that I got one about New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, buller, buller, mate, buller. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, 20 all before we get to the final round. Um, 10 or three points on the table. It's seven or three still for you here, Ben, to try and create a lead before that last round. I need seven. I need to find seven. So um, I did quite well with. We've got a wing left, don't we? We've got 14. Yeah, 14 still yeah. there. Yeah, let's go 14. 14. We're going back to the first test in Brisbane, 2013, Lions against Australia. It's not that too far back. Who was the last Wallaby to attempt to tackle George North on his rampaging run for that famous try? Who was the last Wallaby? Can you picture it? Nope. I have absolutely no idea. You're in trouble there. So, but you do have no. options. And I'll back myself on the on the choices. I want to be able to miss a tackle. Let's, let's try and find one. Yeah, who are they? The choices <laughs> are Beric Barnes, James O'Connor, Will Genia. The last Wallaby to attempt to tackle him. My answer is O'Connor. Beric Barnes kicked it. Not Wayne Barnes. Can Wayne remember who, when George North got it? And he went past right. three players. Who was the last one to try and tackle George North? Um, I think, it, was it Genya? It was Genya. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was O'Connor first, brushed him off. Then Barnes tried to make up for the kick that really didn't go where he wanted it to go. And, and Genya's Genya. last desperate attempt. And, of course, George's celebration as Genya lay there on the floor. So, we are level going into round eight. Oh. Which is the roundabout refereeing of sorts or officiating mm. and Wayne you went for this round <laughs> let's go and this is where tactics come into play because if you go for the 10 point option with no help you'll have another saleable position you could be heading towards a draw of course but you can't be beaten but you can have options so your question is world cup final 2003 Andre Watson of South Africa was the referee in Sydney for England and Australia. Paul Honnis of New Zealand was on touch. But who was the other on-field assistant that day? In the World Cup final 2003, and your reaction suggests it's going to hurt to find the answer. See, I knew it was Paul Honnis on the one touch. I just... Um... I think I know this. Shame well, it's not yours then, Ben. Awesome. But... So the Kiwi, I can... Because Chris White should have refereed the final if England hadn't been there. He would have refereed the final. So it rules out the English, rules out the Australians. There were a load of Australians there. So who else was there? Paddy was there. Um, and the French were there. So I think it was Paddy. Because I think they would have used the seven hemisphere boys altogether. Um, I'm quite excited it's here because you've got a choice be, to make. It's got to be Paddy. It's got to be Paddy. Because um, Ben knows it. And Ben doesn't know a lot about refereeing history. <laughs> but if he knows it, it would have been his boss. So I'm going Paddy O'Brien. 
That might have been a bit of back chat there, Ben, that you could regret because Paddy O'Brien is the answer. Yes. Oh. It's a 10-pointer. <laughs> it's a 10-pointer. We might have to have a golden try here, a golden point. Oh. Okay, Ben, your question. You know you've got to go for 10. At least you know that. He's going got 30 to 20. And it relates to 2007 World Cup final. Alan Roland of Ireland was, of course, the referee. England, South Africa in Paris. Paul Honnis of New Zealand. Come on, Homer. He's, he's, he's everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> but who was the other on-field assistant that day? 2007, okay, so I think, Paris. I think this is, this is the assistant referee that I was thinking of for the previous question. <laughs> so... I reckon... I, I know this. No pressure, but I know this. Is that because he was your boss as well? Uh, oh. At a, world, at a world rugby level? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well, maybe, but well, maybe I was there. <laughs> yes, you were, actually. Um, oh, was he your boss back then? You know oh, okay, so, options. so I, got, I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to go for it. Um, I know that Paul Honus was the assistant referee. I know he did work with Joao Jute before, um, and I'm, I'm just going to go with Joao Jute. It's a draw. It's 30 all <laughs> yes. between the rest. Come on. <laughs> We're going to pull that out from. Answers. Yeah. Impartiality, Brilliant. see, straight down the middle is always miles. Yeah. <laughs> it seems appropriate, doesn't it? 30 or.